the vast majority of people I have consulted with through the years for air purification solutions have contacted me for guidance on purifiers that would help filter particles in the air like allergens, dust, mold, pet dander, and things of this nature. Therefore, we're going to go over the different particle sizes of some of the more common particles in the air that we breathe so we have a better understanding of what level of filtration we wish to attain in our environments. And there are three main takeaways from this information that I think people should take into consideration when they're analyzing the air purification options on the market. So let's get into it. Air particles are oftentimes measured in size by microns. What is a micron? A micron is short for a micrometer, and it is one millionth of a meter. There are 1,000 microns in a millimeter, and there are 25,400 microns in an inch. A human here on average is about 70 microns in thickness or diameter, give or take 30 microns depending on the thickness of the hair. And as you know, we can see a hair strand with our naked eyes. The smallest objects that are visible to the naked human eye are 40 to 50 microns in size or diameter. So we can see a single hair strand because it's about 70 microns. But if an object is smaller than 40 microns in size, we cannot see it with just our eyes. There are three different particle categories based on size ranges. The largest particles in the air are called coarse particles, and they are 2.5 microns in diameter to 100 microns. And since we can see particles that are 40 microns and larger, we can actually see some of these particles. Examples of coarse particles can be pollen or mold spores. Important to note, coarse particles make up less than 1% of all the particles in the air we breathe. They may irritate our eyes, nose, and or throat, but they are not the most dangerous particles to humans. Our natural defenses do a better job of handling them than the smaller particles. The second category of particles are called fine particles, and they are 0.1 microns to 2.5 microns in diameter. And since we cannot see anything less than 40 microns, that means we cannot see these particles with the naked eye. Examples of fine particles are household dust, bacteria, and dust mite allergens. Fine particles make up only about 9% of all the particles in the air we breathe. They can affect our eyes, nose, and throat like coarse particles. But since they are smaller, they can also get into our lungs so they are harder for our natural defense systems to deal with. In general, the smaller the particles are, the easier they're able to get into our bodies, and they tend to delve deeper into our bodies as well. And I also currently believe that A, smaller particles are harder for us to test for, and B, smaller particles are harder for air purifiers to take out of the air. Now, I've read some people say that this is not the case. However, I currently do not agree with them on this. The smaller the particle, the harder it is to filter in general. Now, the third category of particles are called ultrafine particles, and they are 0.1 microns to 0.003 microns in size. Examples of these particles are pet dander, tobacco smoke, and viruses. Ultrafine particles comprise about 90% of all the airborne particles in the air that we breathe. So the overwhelming vast majority of particles in the air that we breathe are super small and they are small enough to pass through our lung tissue into our bloodstream. They can affect our eyes, nose, throat, and lungs, and they can also affect our heart, brain, kidneys, and liver. These ultrafine particles are the most dangerous particles for humans. Now, when it comes to particle sizes, they typically fall into ranges. So a particle is not typically one specific size, like two microns, and that's it. Each particle type typically comes in a range of sizes, and different sources will tend to provide different specific size ranges for the same particles, so it can be confusing. For example, Hughes Environmental says dust particles are 2.5 to 420 microns in size. Aronsi, the air purification manufacturer, on the other hand, states household dust is 0.5 to 100 microns, and the Engineering Toolbox website states that household dust is 0.05 to 100 microns in size. So as you can see, they all have different size ranges depending on the source. I just want you to be aware of this because it is confusing. 
And this is just one of the reasons, like I said earlier, that I think it is very difficult to consistently measure small particles, even for experts. So when I comprise the following list, I use the sizes from multiple sources. So here are some common particles and their size ranges. Asbestos is 0.1 to 90 microns, and we can see some asbestos particles with our naked eyes, at least the ones that are over 40 microns in diameter, and some asbestos particles we cannot see. Bacteria is 0.2 to 60 microns. Household dust is anywhere from 0.05 to about 100 microns. For every dust particle you can see with your eyes, there are about nine other ones in the ear that you cannot see. Mold spores are two to 100 microns. Mycotoxins are 0.1 microns, and they can be attached to the dust you breathe, and they can cause all sorts of health-related problems for people. Pet dander particles are 0.1 to 100 microns in size. Pollen is 2.5 to 200 microns. Tobacco smoke is 0.01 to 4 microns. Wildfire smoke is less than 0.1 microns to 100 microns. And viruses are 0.005 to 0.3 microns in size. So that is a quick rundown of the various size ranges of some different particles in the air that we breathe. As we can see, many particles can fall into multiple different particle ranges, like household dust and tobacco smoke. They both fall into all three particle size headings. They can be ultrafine, fine, or even coarse particles. So all this being said, here are three main takeaways from this information that I think we need to consider when we evaluate air purification solutions. Number one, most particles that we breathe are smaller than the HEPA standardization. The ultrafine particles are the most dangerous to humans because they're able to navigate our defense systems better because they are smaller and they compose 90% of all the particles in the air that we breathe. They are 0.1 microns to 0.003 microns in size, which means they are smaller than HEPA. HEPA stands for High Efficiency Particulate Air, and the HEPA benchmark is 99.97 of all airborne particles down to 0.3 microns. And you will oftentimes see most air purifiers on the market claim to have HEPA filters in them. But remember, the ultrafine particles are smaller than HEPA. And we can also see that fine particles are also smaller than the HEPA standardization as well, as fine particles can go down to 0.1 microns, which is smaller than 0.3 microns. According to our chart, that can include additional particles like asbestos and pet dander. This means that over 90% of all the particles in the air that we breathe are smaller than HEPA standardization and they are the most dangerous to humans. This is a very important concept to understand. Now, I don't doubt that legitimate HEPA solutions do filter some of the particles less than 0.3 microns. I do believe they must filter some of them, as some people have stated. But the question I would have is, what percentage of particles less than 0.3 microns would a good HEPA solution filter? Certainly not all of them, right? Not 100%. Well, IQAir says, that ordinary HEPA solutions have a total system efficiency of only 37% for ultrafine particles and some of the smaller fine particles as well. Particles in the size range of 0 0.003 to one micron. So this is a legitimate question to ask. How many particles less than 0.3 microns do HEPA air purifiers actually filter? as they are the most dangerous to humans and they make up the lion's share of particles in the air that we breathe. Number two, don't be fooled by some of the air purifier smoke and pet dander or dusty pre-filter test videos that you oftentimes see on YouTube. I personally call these type of videos sensational videos as I feel like they're kind of taking advantage of the minds of the masses who don't really understand what they are looking at when presented the information. Since we can't actually see the vast majority of the particles in the air, we must realize that when we're looking at all these smoke testing videos online that try to impress us with how well the units work by taking visible smoke out of the air quickly, these are only the particulates that we can actually see with our eyes. They oftentimes insinuate that the unit in the test is a quality solution because it is passing your eye inspection test. However, we need to always remember that we can only see particles 40 microns and larger. 
and we therefore have no idea how well an air purifier is actually filtering the ultrafine particles in these video test chambers because we can't see the small particles. See this video here? Just because a filter takes the visible smoke out of the air very quickly in a really small chamber does not necessarily mean it is a good air purifier. The smallest particles are the hardest to filter and we cannot actually see them. Therefore, a video test like this does not show us how much the ultra fine and fine particles the unit is taking out of the air. It is only showing us what we can see with our naked eyes, which is literally only 1% of all the particulates in the air that we breathe. Other testing videos will show us a dirty pre-filter like this one. Oftentimes they will show a pre-filter with a lot of dust on it or even pet fur or pet dander to make you think the unit is a great air purifier. But again, the particles that we are viewing are 40 microns and larger, and therefore they comprise only 1% of all the particles in our air. And just because a pre-filter has visible dust or dog or cat hairs on it does not mean it is a good air purifier or that it even filters at a HEPA level. You can take an ordinary inexpensive fan and attach a carbon filter to it and you're eventually gonna see some dust and particulate accumulation as well. Here, I've taken a cheap fan and attached a cheap pre-filter to it, and look, it has accumulated dust, and the filter is much lighter in color than what it looks like when it's brand new out of the box. But that certainly does not mean the fan and pre-filter are performing at a HEPA level. It doesn't even have a HEPA filter. It's just a fan. And look at this. This is the pre-filter on a heater that I own. Look at all the dust accumulation. Does that mean my heater is doing a great job of purifying the air? Of course not, it's just a heater. Visible dust and debris will most always accumulate on an air purifier's pre-filter, but don't think for one second that means the air purifier is doing a good job of filtering your air. I've heard that one of the reasons many companies make that pre-filter dark in color is to try to impress the consumer as it will most always accumulate visible dust and debris. Number three. I currently believe that 90% and even more of all the air purifiers on the market that say they have a HEPA filter in them actually do not perform at a HEPA level, especially when their filters get dirty with some dust and debris over the course of weeks and months, because there are more variables involved that make an air purifier actually perform at a HEPA level than just simply having a HEPA filter in them. It's not that simple. And the industry is not regulated closely so you can easily have the word HEPA on the box of your air purifier without it actually performing at a HEPA level. So those are three general takeaways I want people to understand about the air purification industry, and I want you to ponder them as you make purchasing decisions. Click on this video here to expand your air purification knowledge as we learn about some of the common standardizations in the industry, such as PM10, PM2.5, and the AQI, Air Quality Index. How relevant and reliable are they? I mean, some of the standardizations have changed through the years and continue to change. So what is considered clean air today is different from a few years ago. The parameters have changed. And I suspect the parameters will again change in the future as well. So please click on this video here to learn more. Thank you.